Okay, we are at section um, 10.5, uh, rigid object under a net torque. So let's share the uh, PowerPoint. And we, we look at a, uh, a figure here where there's a, a, a force on a small mass M at a radial distance from some center point of rotation. Um, so the tangential force on the particle results in a torque on the particle about an axis through the center of the circle. Um, so the, tangen the sum of the tangential forces equals mass times the tangential acceleration. Um, and the sum of the torques is equal to the sum of the uh, tangential forces times R. Remember, uh, torque is uh, the uh, force times uh, a radial uh, lever arm or just a, a lever arm, a distance, force times distance. And so that force, the tangential force is mass times uh, acceleration in the ten tangential direction. So it's uh, MA tangential times R. But what is a, a tangential acceleration? It's related to the um, rotational acceleration by uh, uh, R, a R alpha. So if we substitute R alpha into uh, A tangential, um, acceleration, the tangential acceleration, we get M R alpha times R, well, that's mass times uh, radius squared times angular acceleration. So the sum of the torques is equal to uh, I alpha. What is I? I is the moment of inertia. We're gonna get into that a little bit uh, later. Uh, but M times R squared is the moment of inertia. Uh, the, uh, uh, just as mass is a resistance to, um, a, uh, it's resistance to change in velocity, um, or mass is the resistance to change in acceleration. If you remember, acceleration equals uh, force divided by mass, as the mass goes up, the acceleration goes down. The uh, moment of inertia is the resistance to changes in, um, in rotation. Uh, so it, it plays a similar role to, to mass, but it's, it's mass at a, uh, two things can have the same mass, the same amount of mass, but depending on how their mass is distributed will depend, will determine their uh, moment of inertia. Um, okay, so if we have, if we look at a, an object that's rotating, uh, a solid object, if we look at uh, all the particular parts of mass, the, the, let's read the box here, the particle of mass mi of the rigid object experiences torque in the same way that the particle in the previous figure does. So, oops, uh, wrong direction. And so the uh, force for the I, um, the force for the I object equals mass of the ith object times the, its acceleration. Um, so torque uh, for I is equal to uh, Ri times Fi equals uh, R times Miai. Um, so torque uh, for the ith case is equal to the mass of the ith case times Ri squared times alpha. Uh, now alpha is gonna be the same for all the objects, there is no ith um, uh, rotation, uh, rotational acceleration. They're all going to be the same. Um, so the sum of the torques um, is equal to the the sum of the external torques is equal to the um, sum of all the uh, torques sub i, uh, and that's equal to all the mass i times r i squared times alpha. So that's equal to the, you know, we group it together, the sum of mi uh, ri squared times alpha. So the sum of the uh, external torques is equal to i alpha, where i, the moment of inertia, is equal to the sum of uh, mi times ri squared. Uh, so if you were to have, let's say you were to have uh, four billiard balls uh, on a uh, wire frame, the depending on which way you spun it, uh, you would get a different a different um, moment of inertia if you d d rotated it to where they were all like at the edge of a 
uh, like if you rotated it through the center of their axes, uh, you would get one moment of inertia. If you spun it through one of the wires that the two of the balls were mounted, then you would get a different moment of inertia. So a uh, moment of inertia has to do with mass distribution, not only mass. Okay, the moment of the inertia is equal to um, the sum of the masses times each individual element's radius squared. Uh, I equals the sum of all the I's of mi ri squared. Um, so the, um, the uh, sum of the external torques equals I alpha. Uh, that's similar to the sum of the forces uh, the external forces equals mass times acceleration uh, of the center of mass. So they, they each play a different role. Um, again, mass is resistance to acceleration. Uh, moment of inertia, I, is resistance to uh, rotational acceleration. Um, and now here are some examples of uh, um, moments of inertia. Uh, if you have a, a, uh, a thin hoop uh, or a thin cylindrical shell, its um, uh, moment of inertia around its center of mass uh, is equal to uh, mR squared. If, if you take a solid cylinder, it's one half mR squared. So you can see that the, um, the, um, the cylindrical shell has a, it, it is twice the has twice the moment of inertia as the the solid disc um, and a hollow hollow cylinder where the, with the appreciable inner radius and outer radius uh, is uh, one half m times uh, r one squared plus r two squared. Now let's look at the rod down the center column here, a long thin rod. Um, now we we can assume that it's the same mass as the one below it, but it depends on the the uh, where the axis of rotation is, if you were to uh, spin it around the center, uh, like the center post, it, the center of mass is one twelfth the mass times L squared. Whereas if you, so, so if you have this rod and you spin it this way, it's one twelfth. If you were to spin it this way around its, uh, it, one of its ends, it's one third ML squared. So it, it, it would take more torque to move it around this direction than it does to move it around this direction. Uh, re rectangular plate, solid sphere, sp solid sphere, and a thin spherical shell. Uh, so these are some of the moments of, of, of inertia. Uh, and we'll try to do a, a lab demonstration um, in the, uh, that, that demonstrates this. Okay. Uh, you turn off your electric drill and find that the time interval for the rotating bit to come to, to rest due to frictional torque on the, in the drill is delta T. You replace the bit with a larger one that results in a doubling of the moment of inertia of the drill's entire rotating mechanism. When this larger bit is rotated at the same angular speed as the first and the drill is turned off, the frictional torque remains the same as that for the previous situation. What is the time interval for this second bit to come to rest? Well, if you, if you double the moment of inertia, then it takes uh, twice as long, two delta T, to, um, to come to rest. Uh, so the, uh, the, the rigid model, uh, rigid object under a net torque, uh, oh, I went too far on my notes, or did I? Uh, yes, I did. Um, the, the sum of the external torques is equal to I alpha, and the, there's some examples of bi bicycle chain around the sprocket of a bicycle causes the rear wheel of the bicycle to rotate. An electric dipole moment in an electric field rotates due to the electric uh, force from the, the field. Uh, a magnetic dipole moment in a magnetic field rotates due to the magnetic force from the field. And the armature of a motor rotates due to the torque exerted by a surrounding magnetic field. So these are just some of the uh, applications. In the next uh, uh, little video, we're going to talk about the calculation of moments of inertia.